Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Anjali. Good evening, Anjali, ma'am. Good, e Good evening, Priyanka. Um, I think, uh, ma'am, just say carry on. Two, three minutes, me, sir. Can we start because uh, the participants will increase by within next ten, fifteen minutes, as Priyanka is saying. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. So, ma'am, should I start? I think so. Ah, yeah. ah please, let's start. Okay, ma'am. Uh, a very good evening to all the participants. Uh, uh, I would like to, uh, before we start, I would like to introduce the uh, speaker for the session, Professor Ajay Chohan, sir. Dr. Ajay Chohan is the founder and CEO of Research Shiksha and a trainer of data science and analysis. He is a former faculty member at IMT Ghaziabad with over 20 years of experience in academia and industry and a trainer uh, in applications like Orange, Python, R, Stata, SPSS, MOS, eViews for data science and data analytics. Sir has a uh, rich experience and an expertise in the field of data sciences. Sir has conducted more than 500 workshops all over India in the last 18 years uh, using these softwares. And uh, Sir has also authored uh, books such as Financial Analysis, Business Research Analytics, and Financial Risk Management. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, uh, accepting uh, the uh, uh, invite and being here with us to enrich our knowledge. And we all know how well uh, uh, equipped you are with all the qualitative uh, data analysis. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Brinka. The topic which is given to me today is thematic analysis. So my today lecture uh, will be focused on first thematic analysis. Then second session will be on the social media analytics. Because the time is limited, so I will speak only the point to point. And my session will consist of two parts. For around uh, 20 minutes, I will speak on the content theory, theoretical background. And around one hour, I will speak, I will show you, demonstrate with the help of NVivo software. So in this way, we will move. Now, let me discuss about the basics of thematic analysis. Actually, <clears throat> thematic analysis, I came to know in 2019. Before 2019, I did not aware about the thematic analysis. So, but in 2019, once I uh, knew it, so I feel that we are doing, we were doing thematic analysis from last 20 years, even 25 years, 30 years. But we all do thematic analysis by default. We don't know that we are thematic. So thematic analysis is actually the concept which we, which we do on daily basis, almost. So whenever you read, you indirectly, directly or indirectly, you are doing the thematic analysis. So let me uh, start with a example. Because now from last two or three years, I'm only in research. So try to find out the basics of this. So uh, we started with the idea. So let's see what, what is there in the introduction section of the research paper. So I, I uh, attended a, one of the lecture in 2020 of a foreign author. So the foreign author told me only one thing that when you send your paper for publication, the quality of introduction section is 90% responsible for rejection and the acceptance. So that sentence was very, very important for me. 
so then i think yeah, okay the introduction section is so important and one of my friend who was working who is working in australia told me ajay you don't believe when we write a research paper we spend two months at least only writing one page of introduction that is so important so then we decided let's do a post mortem of the introduction section so we start collecting the introduction section of many papers we collected around uh, 30 35 papers and all a star no not less quality not less than a star so then we uh, when we start reading the introduction section of all the papers we found that the introduction can be divided into five thing five paragraphs or five important aspects so then we try to find out the different aspect so then we learned that the in introduction section can be divided into five themes so these important sections we named as themes and if any of the theme is not there in the introduction section your paper will not be accepted so whenever we write a paper we try to incorporate all these five themes in the introduction and we have to design all the themes in in such a way that the chances of rejection of a paper comes down to a lot to a large extent so this is one of the simple example of thematic analysis so i will give you the answer of this question later on but let me start another point just similar to that so uh because in one of the session i was talking to the students and i asked one simple question that uh, because all of you appear in the exam so assume assume that you are having a book and you have to appear in an exam so you need to read the book or or a chapter of a book so you know that this chapter this chapter is coming in the exam so we have to read the whole chapter normally the name of the chapter is very broad right but you have to read the chapter so when you do this when you read the chapter so what we usually do you can remember your exam days also so that you can relate to the point so first of all you underline the important lines main to up in underline karta tha mujhe pata hai so i used colorful pencils to underline the important points second i noted down the important keywords because there are many keywords which are very very important i underline the important keywords that if if i write if i use these keyword in the exam i will get the more marks so i know that so i underline the important keywords then highlight the or or we do the highlighting of the important lines jaise you can see in the ppt that some are yellow some are green some are blue so we basically i have seen some of the uh, my colleagues who uh, do these kind of marking in the book that uh, these are the important keywords important points in the line in, in the chapter and sometimes we uh, provide different colors like whenever we are talking about the disadvantage we use red color advantage green color then right some history another color so for different topics we use different colors right and after that we make the notes iske baad hum kya karte the after doing all these things we make the notes so we take all the underlines we all the highlighted keywords and all so we we make our own notes in the register so if you understand each and every line which i said it's nothing it is the thematic analysis this is only the thematic analysis isi ko hum thematic analysis kehte hain the only thing is that now we are doing all these things in the computer in the in the software otherwise technically i am telling you this is the thematic analysis nothing else 
okay so now i have i hope you are having some idea that what is the meaning of thematic analysis so thematic analysis is a process where you read the content chapter or a book or a article or a newspaper or a news then you identify the important lines important keywords after that you categorize all these keywords after categorization you measure the quantity and uh, after measuring the quantity then we summarize them so this is nothing what is this is nothing it is a thematic analysis aur hum aaj bhi karte hain kal bhi karte the aage bhi karenge to it's very common now let's move to the next so ab hum kaise karte hain so in 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 the class i am telling you when i was teaching in the class and discussing a case or or discussing something so usually we uh, make the groups the class is divided into groups aur hum unko badi badi rangin parchiya de dete the ki this is the yellow yellow slip slip this is blue slip green slip ye sab every group we provide these chits and ask them to write on the slips right so after that we what we did we we put one category in one place another category and another place another category another place another category another place so after reading the transcript after reading the transcript transcript means the when you take the interview you are having the answers question and answer so these are known as interview transcript or when you read the article or document so this is the first thing then you find out the important statements then we cut the important lines and write on these chits and after that you can see we are categorizing them so we put this uh, one category in one place this category another place third category fourth category five category and all so we divide the uh, all the important lines in the categories for example some are talking about the advantage some are talking about the opportunity some are talking about the strength some are talking about the threats some are talking about the history some are talking about the future futuristic things like that so on the basis of this we 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 categorize categorize so this categorization will give us a lot of statements which comes in one category so and this is the second last stage of the thematic analysis so after doing the thematic analysis and uh, categorization categorization of the the different sentence important sentence or sentence which you underline then after that you summarize them then we summarize so this is nothing this is overall thematic analysis okay so th these are some of the bookish uh, definitions about the thematic analysis you you can read it um so i'm not going to discuss much of these because uh, when you read something from the books it is very complicated so now my uh, this is the process of thematic analysis given by brown and clarke initially so the whatever is written in the box is the is, is the bookish sentence and i read my own i write my own meaning on the top and bottom so the book say that the first stage is familiarization of data so i say that read it then do the coding so coding means underlying the important statement so this is called coding and uh, generating the themes so identifying the broad categories is known as themes validity and reliability of the theme so you normally discuss the themes with the experts whether i am giving the right name to the themes or not defining and naming themes in the last stage and then you report it it is a simple example of thematic process so another the so it is a six stage process and the process complete process is mentioning in this slide everything i already explained so we can divide into three broad milestones reading the transcript developing the codes codes means important 
statements important keywords important claims and then summarizing them in the in some format so this is called thematic analysis and after thematic analysis we can also make our theoretical framework sometimes we may make these type of frameworks in this in this chart you can see that there are three themes dislike of the school is one theme and this theme is represented by these are the different keywords and the statements like you dislike this school because there is a bullying in this school boredom in this school frustration rules and regulation lack of relevance so all these are the uh, things we take from the interviews or the documents then expectation and the aspiration of the future poor mental circumstances and happy childhood so we make different themes and we try to relate them after that we will develop a theory on grounded basis and uh, so you can take it to the uh, at any level because in mixed method approach we start from the qualitative then we propose a framework then we examine the framework with the help of the data collection so you can take it thematic analysis to any level to even quantitative level and the theory building process also okay so in nvivo nvivo is the is the is the master is the number one software according to me where we can do the thematic analysis from uh, different methods so these are the four methods i found we can use uh, for thematic analysis and we try to i try to demonstrate all the four steps of doing thematic analysis in nvivo today okay so these are the four methods so let better i show with the help of nvivo software so now i hope you are having some basic idea about the thematic analysis so let me open the nvivo so this is the icon of nvivo so when we open it we will have some basic front page now this software is very heavy so we will move uh, move slightly slow the software is quite health heavy software when we open the nvo so this is a blank project so i open the blank project uh today is 2nd march so i write the name 2nd march and uh, saved on the desktop okay um, let problem is coming so i am opening a ready made file so in this case this is the front page of the nvivo and first of all i need some database on which i can apply the thematic analysis 
let me see the file, delete it. Okay, now it is a fresh file. I don't have any data set into it. So I'm importing the data. So I go to the import file. So because first of all, you need some database to work with. And uh, so I am importing um, and preserve. So these are the word files which I can import or let me import some. So I'm importing a research file, research paper. Why I'm, uh, so let me import a paper. The problem during the workshop is that I cannot import a big file, otherwise it will take a lot of time. So to avoid the time, I'm importing only one paper. But the same process you can do with 100 papers if you have time. Okay, so this is the only, I'm taking only one file because of the time constraint. Uh, we have done the thematic analysis on even 400 uh, research papers in one time, but that's, that is a time consuming process to avoid that. I am showing you only with one file. So, uh, first of all, I'm showing you the method. The first method of doing the thematic analysis is that automatic theme generation. This is the method number one. Now in method number one, if you don't read the paper, because sometimes we do it on uh, 1000 news, 1000 annual reports or 500 sustainability reports. It is not possible to read all the reports manually because if you start reading it, 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 requires, a, uh, it requires years. Uh, <clears throat> in one of the project, we, we applied the thematic analysis on uh, let's say uh, 500 articles. So, the first method is that read all the articles manually, but sometimes we don't have much time. And uh, especially when we do it on sustainability reports, annual reports. So reading all the reports is not possible. So in that, in those cases, this method is the best method. So now what is the method? Assume that there are hundred research papers in this file. So what I will do, I will select all of them, go to go to automatic coding. And now I'm saying that I'm say, uh, requesting the software that I'm not, I don't have time to read all these articles. So kindly read all these articles and suggest me the themes. So who is reading the article? Software, I'm not reading, software is reading that. So this is called automatic theme generation. So we click on the identify themes and go to the next. And because why this method is most important because I'm telling you as a consultant, even I don't have time to read all the hundred articles, especially when we work for other projects and uh, the person, the client is not also have the time. So this is the best method. Now, in this case, the software give me the themes automatically. So let me finish first. Now, software read the complete paper and suggest me the different themes if the software found in the paper. So these are the different themes. Usually the themes are saved in the nodes automatic. So let, if I click it, you can see all the themes. Now, the only work we have to do is to delete the unnecessary themes and keep the necessary themes simple. So like, for example, the software say that these are the themes which I found in the paper. 
like blockchain blockchain is the main important business okay uh, seems good banking seems good process yeah it seems good transaction cost data system so software saying that these are the different themes i found from your paper okay then i try to identify all these themes and software is telling you is giving you some data also like for example because here the file is only one suppose you have 1000 files so software say that the this theme is available in 500 files this theme is available in 400 files the theme is available in 200 files so even the number of files is also coming so amazing and how many references how references means how many sentences how many sentences are found underlined by the software which is based on blockchain so that is this amazing thing which software can do for you uh, software is also showing you the lines so let's say let's start with the systems or or a process or banking let's say banking because we are having only 12 references so let's start from this so banking now software say that uh, this paper is talking about the banking in banking these are the sub themes or you can say these are the important sub themes or the uh, important lines related to the banking matlab banking ke bare mein block uh, paper mein jo jo likha hai wo ye raha ab aapko rakhna hai rakho nahi rakhna hai matlab ko simple no so i have to decide whether to keep it or not so like bank executives so one of the keywords related to the banking in the paper is bank executive so i want to know whether should i keep it or remove it so i double click on it now software is very smart software will show you the the what what is the line so just you can see the software is taking time so i have to wait the only problem with the and who is that it is a heavy software takes time and we cannot do anything in between so thematic analysis is simply reading the complete document identify the important lines and on the basis of the lines categorize the lines and uh, after that we can summarize it okay so the software is giving me all the themes in front of you the only thing is that i have to select that which theme to keep and which theme to reject okay but uh, now software is is finding out the line and give me the line now you can see that software is find out the line which is talking about the bank executives okay so let me yeah now now you can see that uh, this is a paragraph where we are talking about the bank executives only thing we have to do here is to think that we should keep whether we should keep this line this line is important for the uh, theme or not so we followed a five step process to create this uh, 600 expert we identified two sectors okay so i am not talking about the content of this because i am just showing you the process similarly if i want to go for core banking now software will search this line this is the line where we talk about the core banking you can see the core banking is important here core banking the only thing is that you have to read go to each and every line and uh, decide whether to keep this line or delete this line like for example just let's let's assume that i don't like this line so now i i say the software delete this line because this this line is not important for me so i delete it software will delete this line from the code and whatever is left up and uh, believe me this step takes some time 10 days 15 days 20 days even a month because sometimes we are working on 200 files 200 annual reports 200 200 sustainability reports so uh, we have to read each and every line suggested by the software to us and 
uh, even sometimes we are confused whether to keep this line or remove this line, keep this line or remove this line. So after a deep understanding, now we are identi- we are able to uh, give the final shape of the remaining important relevant lines in with us. So this is the method number one. In method number one, the software read for you, suggest you the suggest you because software can only suggest you, suggest you different important lines. You have to decide which line to keep, which line to remove. So after that, the task is done and we can report in the research paper. And if you want to uh, export it, you just go to the share. And you can see that there is a, a, a export code book. So you can go to the export code book and click OK. So the whole code book can be exported very easily. Similarly, if you click on any of the this blockchain, so you can export list. So there are export options. Uh, with the help of these export options, you can export the each and everything in the in, in the word format. So like for example, entire content. So now I, if I click OK, uh, entire content OK, the software will share the complete code book, the complete information in the Excel format. Now you can uh, you can go there and can represent in your paper or wherever you want. So this code book is saved here, maybe in some place. Okay, but I have not checked where what is the place of saving it. Let me, uh, it is desktop blockchain HTML in HTML format. If I go to this or summary view, summary view, so you can open on export, it is much better. Okay, so you can do the export also. Yeah, so you can see that after exporting, you will get each and every thing in much detail. So the complete entire content you got in the word format. So that is the easiest thing we can do. And here from here, we can remove, uh, keep it. So this is the step number one. Okay. Now in step number one, the software is giving you each and every solution. And now you have to finalize it. So I'm coming back to method number two now. So showing you what is method number two. Before going to the method number two, just few things which I want to share. The automatic theme generation is helpful when the number of documents are very large and you don't have time to read it. It's a very simple method to start with. When you need to decide which theme to retain and which to delete, remaining theme to be presented. So whatever themes or lines are remained, you have to present them. How to present them that I will also discuss. Now I'm moving to the step number two, the method number two, keyword method. Keyword method, keyword method. Okay, so another method I'm showing you. So I have the document. I go to the explore. I have to, in explore, go to the word frequency. Now in the word frequency, because the word frequency is a algorithm where software identify the most frequent words from the file. And we believe that the words which are highly frequent are the more, more important words because suppose I'm giving a lecture on the blockchain. So it means blockchain word comes many times. If I am demonstrating you and vivo, so this word comes many times. So that's why the frequency of the word is again a logic 
of developing the code. So minimum length I decide is three. Three means the word with at least three alphabets. Selected items, because there is only one item, so there is no selection here, but let you have to select the item. Item means the document from where you want to do the analysis. And after that, you can have the option of run query. In run query, you have to another options like with stem words or with exact matches like this. So I always prefer to go for stem words. Why? Because the sometimes we are having the words like consult, consulting, consult, consult, consult is a word. So in English language, there are two type of words. One is called the root word and other is called extended word. Like consult is the root word and the extension of the consult is consultation, consultant, consulting, consultation. So these are the extended words. So if you, if you believe that consulting, consultant, consultation, cons so these are the same word. So you can keep in one category. So don't make different other categories. So that's why for this point of view, I clicked on this option and now I go to run query. So software say that the blockchain and blockchains, I software say that th this is same word. So I keep this word, original word, and these are two extended words. Technology, technological, technologies, technology are the same words. So there is no difference. And these two years you can remove. So sometimes we have to uh, clean the document because 2008 is, I know that this is not very, very useful. So I am adding to the stop word list. List, stop word list means useless word list. So I am, any word if I found is not useful, I added them into the stop word list. And when I click on run query again, the word will not appear. So after that, you can click on the word cloud. Word cloud is a pictorial representation of the important keywords. So you may be surprised to know that thematic analysis can be done from here also. Okay, so these are the important words. Uh, 2016 is not important, so I'm adding to the stop word list. So you can also add, remove the word from here. Let me blockchain, technology, business, service. I think all these words are important. Fine. So again, I am running query or any other word which is sim which is follows let me remove this also follow so i am removing the follow run query so some cleaning is required so now this is the modified modified our word cloud now uh, you do you know that technology seems to be very very important here so i click on the technology and you can see that create technology as code Take, create Technology as code. This is one of the option I am getting from the window. The meaning of create technology as code is that you are defining the technology as a category, as a broad category. Right. So you can identify the theme from using the keyword options. All these are the keywords. And you, if you feel that any of the keyword is important, you can make, make the keyword as a theme so i create i click on create technology as code right and where you want to save it you can say that i want to save in uh, nodes no problem and okay so the name of the theme is technology So you can click OK. So after that, the software will assume that this is a uh, theme. And you, if you want to see the theme, you can go to the notes, uh, technology, where it should come. 
Mm. Yeah. So you can see that in, in the technology, there are 267 differences in the text. There are, it means there are 267 lines which is talking about the technology. Similarly, uh, business, business, create businesses code. Okay. Business. So business is there. Similarly, uh, any other word like uh, technology, uh, blockchain. So create blockchain as code. Blockchain. So now this is the third theme. So this method of theme is known as the develop of the themes using the uh, keywords, keyword style of developing the themes. So in some cases, we also do that. Uh, especially suppose you are having the articles based on. So recently we collected the articles on artificial intelligence. Even in some of the uh, study, we collected the articles related to the derivative market. Then we do the thematic analysis on, on the derivative market. So we identify the theme using this method. So after continuing this method, you can identify all the important themes which are visible here. This is known as method number two. Okay. <clears throat> so I hope this method number two is clear. After that, I can show you the method number three. So in method number three, what happens? Sometimes we are having, have, having the interviews. Let me show you the interviews or even I let me show here. So now I'm importing some of the interviews. Suppose these are the interviews. And uh, interview will come here. If I, so these are the interviews. If I click on any interview, let me click on this interview. So you can see that the, all the interviews are structured interviews and we ask the same questions we ask the same question to all the people. So in all the interviews, questions are same, but answers are different. So in, in many research papers, in many studies, I found that the scholar is having a predefined set of questions. And the, the research researcher asks the same question to different people. So in this case, in, in all the, all the interviews, you can see that the questions are same. Your life mantra, like we ask this question to everybody. So you can see that your life mantra, or even if I click on this, so your life mantra. So what I'm showing you is that every interview is having the same set of questions. Sometimes we have this case, especially those, those who are doing PhD, they follow this method because they, they cannot explore in the research. They take the interviews, all the interviews are systematic, structured. They know the questions, what questions they want to ask. They ask these questions one by one and uh, noted the answers. So in this case, we are adopting a separate method. So let me explain you what method we can adopt here. So first of all, you have to click on any interview, every interview. Now I have to select this line. 
first of all i have to click on edit so that i can edit it now this line is maybe very very important for me so i select this line and defined as a heading one similarly i will select this line defined as a heading two so let me come oh, sorry he, not heading two heading one heading one heading one so because all of these are my themes uh, most challenging part of your journey so this is my theme heading one similarly okay software is taking the complete line how did you overcome initial challenges heading one three qualities of an individual heading one your life mantra heading one one success habit so what i am doing i am selecting the important lines and define them as heading one so what actually what is important here the software assume all these headings as themes automatically so all basically all these are my themes like this right so let me do one more so that i can show you the complete process so i am explaining each line first of all edit heading one heading one this is the method number 3 heading one and believe me all these uh, exercises i am telling you on the basis of my personal experience uh, no book is covering all these things okay heading 1 okay so once i define each each and every line as heading 1 i can select them like this because i defined heading only, only in two files so i can take only these two files if i repeat the process for all other i can select all other also so let's go to auto code so now use the style or structure so go to the fourth option use the style or structure because i am defining all my themes according to the heading one so i click on this option next paragraph style next so i am defining on the basis of the heading one so i am using the heading one for my themes next under existing node or case fine no problem a uh, name third method uh name okay so i have to find out the location um so we have already made theme so that's why the problem is there okay let me delete them first otherwise i will not able to continue so i am deleting is the previously defined themes otherwise software will mix all these themes Okay, now I have the files with me. Select auto code. Uh, use the style or structure on the basis of the heading one. Next. Now you can select the node. Mm 
new folder. Let's make the new folder. Third method and finish. So software will show you in different folder. You can see that. And software, you can see that all the questions which we included in the questionnaire, all these questions become the theme. So these are the different questions we included in the interview. And all these are the becomes theme. So let me show you one of the ready-made files on the base of this. <clears throat> I already uh, uh, completed this project earlier also so i am showing you the the uh, results so how we can show the results on the same file on the same exercise just the finished work i am showing you Now, in this case, the I have the transcripts. You can see all the transcripts. If I click on any of the uh, file, the file will open on the right hand side. So we have to wait. So the work is already done on this data set. The only problem is that the software is heavy. Sometimes it hanged. Okay. <clears throat> now you can see the file. And I already selected the question and defined as a heading one so you can see that this is defined as a heading one so after all defining all the questions as heading one not only in this file even in any any all the files in all the files you can see that the questions are defined as heading number one so if you select this heading number one is highlighted so after doing this now we can go for the process so let's see you just select all auto code and fourth option next paragraph styles next according to the heading one next the software will ask for a new so let me click on the new folder so this is second march and finish so this option will take only one minute and you can click on the node second march so all the themes are built by the software automatically now suppose i want to write a paper on the life mantra so if i click on the life mantra I can find out all the answers related to this in one page. So your life mantra for this entrepreneur is this, right? So I can, I can club all the answers of one question at a place. So you can see that all life mantra I have now of each and everybody. Your life mantra of Apurva Joshi, your life mantra of this this entrepreneur, life mantra of another entrepreneur, life mantra of another entrepreneur. And so you can make a paragraph from this page and can add into the summary page. 
So th this is the method number three. So method number three is uh, only helpful when you are having the structured questions and in every interview, question is same. Only thing is that answers are different. So we can use this method also. Third method. Now I am telling you the fourth method, which is the most intelligent method, most genuine method. But the problem is that you have to read the files, right? Now I'm showing you one of the file, which uh, practical file. So give me a minute. I can find out. So I'm showing you one of the file which, where we applied the method number four. So now I'm showing you okay. so one of the candidate, uh, so she was doing research in FMS Delhi. So she conducted the interviews of uh, different companies. So you can see that these are the name of the companies. And she took the interviews of the ex IT expert there. So all these are the interviews. If I show any one interview, like for example, any one interview I'm showing. So these interviews are read many times. And from the interview, you can see that we uh, named, like for example, this is the important keyword, important line. This is the important line. This is the important line. So we identify the important lines and the important sentences. Number one. Number two, you can see that we provide different colors to the different keywords. Right. So you can see that different colors are provided to the different keywords. So each interview is read many times and the most important words are identified. So similarly, I can show you the, all the interviews, all the interviews here are like this. So in every interview, the interview, the, the important sentences, the important keywords are noted and different colors are provided to them. So ideally the original uh, thematic analysis should be like that. So you read the article, you read the interview. So, uh, many times we are having unstructured interviews, uh, means the questions may be different. To somebody you are asking different questions to another person you are asking different person different questions so there is not a structured kind of interview right so in these cases the num method number four is the best method the only thing we have to do is to read the statement read the interview and identify the important keywords identify the important sentences and after that we categorize them and different colors are provided to the different categories. So this method is known as method number four. Now what to do after that? So what to do? So now I am showing you what to do after that. Suppose I have this file with me, right? So I have the file. Let me just demo, give you a demo how to do, what to do how to do it. Let's say,
just showing you the example transcript and suppose i have this okay let me do it uh, Okay, let's do it here. So this is the article. And uh, in the article, I have to read, let me read this paragraph. So what inspired you to build the above product service? So this is my question. So I am asking the, uh, the entrepreneur in this interview. So I have not taken this interview, anybody who's taking the interview. So he or she asked that, what inspired you to build the our product and services? So let me read. Exponential growth of the scalable niche market. So I, I think this is the most, uh, this is the important sentence. So let's give color number. Uh, let red, you can give any color. Let me give red. Lack of efficient player in the market. This is also important. Okay, in the year 2013, when we, we were doing uh, the job of due diligence, we feel an exponential growth in the services. So exp exponential growth in the services. So this is the one important line we found. We were not able to manage the volume to get information manually. So I had to rely on the market sources. Some of them were found to be not genuine authentic. Uh, okay not genuine and authentic players in the market you can see this is one of the reason we want to build credible information to be provided to the client based on which they can put informed lending decisions the vacuum in the market this vacuum in the market inspired us to build a product that would connect the dots and provide the information or the reasoning of the conclusions so basically uh, i found that there are four reasons why this entrepreneur entered into the market. Like uh, the, there is a exponential growth, the lack of efficient players, exponential growth in the services, and there is no genuine player in the market. So let me start take the three, four, four points. After that, let me read this. Uh, okay, I gave red color to this. Let me take it black. Okay, now three qualities an individual must have to achieve success. So I say that honesty and consistency, let me give green color. Staying updated with current know-how, green color. So I'm giving the green color of three qualities. Okay, so similarly, uh, you can read the article and give the different colors to the different aspects. And after that, after that, once you do it, how to generate the theme? So let me open the blank project. Software is not up today opening the blank project. Let me open a existing project. Yeah. So in this case, let me remove this file. And uh, insert once again because now i'm able to import the latest file doctor is saying that the file is open so first you have to close it then only you can open now i think the software is opening this file Yeah, now file is there. So when you open this file, you can see the colors already there. So you can see the colors full. These colors we provided manually after reading the article. Now only thing is that you have to go to create, go to create, create node. And the node is, so what is it about? Inspiration. So ins so I'm creating a theme called inspiration. Okay. So theme will come here. Okay. Let me see the theme. So this theme is already there. 
click on the file and uh, click on the inspiration and now you have to select each line and drag and drop to inspiration so you can see that from one file you have one difference another thing so you have to do it manually every time so from one file two references exponential growth in services just drag and drop so from one file three references fourth so one file four references so, so you can think that how long how long is the process so actually uh, in that project i give access to the client on the any desk and especially when i had lunch or dinner and the scholar uses my laptop and do this process manually because uh, she don't have did not have the and view at the time so this process takes one week complete complete one week to read the article find out the important words and just drag and drop these all these things similarly uh, like for example for this green three qualities of an individual first of all i go to the create node uh, qualities of an entrepreneur you can write anything entrepreneurial qualities so this is my uh, code the code come here now you have to just select drag and drop just select drag and drop so like this so th this is the uh, actually i am telling you uh, if you ask me this is the best method because all other methods are automated methods but this method is the real method of the thematic analysis especially when you are doing on the interviews read the interviews carefully identify the important words and then relate these words identify the themes and relate the word with the theme so in this way you can uh, create the themes like this so uh, this is the step number 4 in total we are having the four steps of thematic analysis in the nvo now i am showing you some of the papers which which i consulted to others for related to the thematic analysis <clears throat> so i will show you some of the papers um yeah so let me show you this paper paper one so in this paper is published paper and uh, in this paper the the scholar collected the sustainability report of the manufacturing sector yeah so and after selecting the sustainability report of different um, different companies let me discuss one by one so first of all we identify the themes so let's go directly to the thematic analysis part uh okay all the tables are in the end of the paper so i started with there yeah so the first thing we have to do is to find out the important top 30 keywords so these are the top 30 keywords we found yeah these are the word cloud now we you can see that these are the themes and the themes are related to the environmental factors or the practices which the manufacturing companies are adopting nowadays 
so the the idea in this paper was that uh, what what are the different ideas on which the manufacturing companies are working to support the environment so these seven themes we found like the energy and change climate change environment stewardship life cycle assessment material management product innovation waste management water management so these are the major themes and after identifying the major themes we identify the important keywords so these are the important keywords we then we identify the important relative weight references references means how many times these statements are mentioned in the in the sustainability reports air energy and climate change main theme these are the sub themes and these are the number of times they are references and these are the relative weights so we calculated all these things and after that we decided to go for the scale development process the idea of scale development process is because whenever we are identifying some new theme we should quantify also quantify them also so then we quantify them and uh, we use the questionnaire method to make a survey and collected all the themes with the sub themes and then when we represent the paper that uh, we go uh, to the scale development via qualitative analysis so this is the simple paper and after that uh, one more step ahead that how much the how much the themes are uh, contributing to the sustainability practices <laughs> so in one paper we do the qualitative analysis quantity uh, then scale development and the hypothesis testing also so this is the paper so i hope now you have clarity on the thematic analysis that uh, what is the purpose of thematic analysis Let's, let me show one more example but it is a phd chapter and not a, a paper it may be possible that we will make the paper after some time but let me show you the okay not finding objective it is objective number 1 yeah so actually you can see that the purpose of the uh, of the first of the objective of the thesis is that what are the factors which contribute the development of commodity future market in india the idea is very simple that on what basis we can say the commodity market developed in the indian economy so in this case we take the interview so you can see that the request was sent to 50 identified academic expert for sparing few minute for the interview however only 12 senior professors were ready for the qualitative interview so we take the interview then telephonic interview was conducted for the academic experts and by these experts and we conducted real interviews and on the basis of the interviews the themes are identified like this so these are the seven themes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seven themes we identified and all these themes are identified along with their keywords or important sentences and then we defined all these keywords and sentences so like for example the first theme the first theme is commodity market development these are the sub themes these are the keywords and these are the references and the relative weight and sometimes i am telling you we are also using the relative weight to make the form the formation of a index because uh, we have developed the index of uh, reputation index corporate governance index or uh, intellectual property intellectual disclosure index so in many research uh, projects we also develop the indexes on the basis of the relative weights because we assume that if some company highlight some word it it means that word is of importance if some if the company highlight some word less it means that word is of less importance because companies are very very smart and they know that which word to highlight and which word not to highlight so sometimes the thematic and uh, analysis also helpful for index formation so we also use them so 
in this way we defined each and every theme so like uh, you can see that all the themes we have represented in numbers followed by all the charts okay so this is the mind map the whole framework we developed in the end so this is the thematic representation of the thematic analysis uh, even this chart is also made in envivo this chart is the complete development of the framework of the development of the commodity future market in india so you can uh, finally you can give the final presentation of the thematic development in this format i am showing you one more thing let me uh, show you that also Mm. Sometimes we also go for multi decision criteria methods. So I am showing you in this in this uh, project. we were developing the intellectual capital disclosure so you can imagine that we are using the 500 companies and in 500 companies we applied this this thematic analysis and uh, we identify the themes so these are these are these are the themes right uh, human capital structural capital relational capital training and development so these are the different themes we found and after identifying the themes we also prioritize that prioritize prioritizing means the which theme is more important which theme is less important and on the basis of the prioritizing the themes we applied the we form the index so now we 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 form form the uh, human capital index so we not only develop one index we develop many indexes so human capital index and this index that index so we developed the different indexes also so thematic analysis can be end ended in the format of index rational capital index uh, so sometimes we use thematic analysis to the formation of the index the logic is again simple if the company highlight some word more and highlight some word less so we assume that the frequent words are more important than less frequent words so you can also develop the indexes on the basis of the thematic analysis then we and we calculate it for each each company and inform which are the top 100 com top uh, 10 companies the like you can see that the top 10 companies in capital disclosure are these and the bottom companies are these so these kind of analysis we can do with the help of thematic analysis so i hope the you have clarity on the thematic analysis now i am open to answer any question if you have in your mind so there are two questions in the chat box uh, can i read them out yeah so uh fitch is asking if there is, is any trial version for envivo yeah but actually uh, uh, for a research scholar the cost is only 9000 for 2 years so why not to buy the cost is very less actually i am telling you the cost of envivo is very very less for uh, research scholars it is hardly 9000 for 2 years so uh, i think they can uh, we can afford that okay uh, so there's one more question it says if we have 50 papers in one folder then how can i run automatic theme generation the method is exactly same which i demonstrated in the workshop only thing is that i am not doing on 50 papers because it will take more time otherwise each and every step is exactly same what you can do on one paper you can similarly you can do on 50 papers or even 500 papers okay. thank you so much sir if anyone else has any question they may uh, write in the chat box
So Altaf is asking that uh, what things we should keep in our mind. Actually, there is a lot of subjectivity in thematic analysis. You have to because the objective is to summarize. So, what are the important points to summarize? You have you should know that. Like whenever we are talking about the uh, sustainability reports, so what to report? Whenever we are doing on uh, articles or literature review. because i have seen thematic analysis on the literature review also so whenever you are doing it so you should know <coughs> that how to summarize the topic how to summarize the topics okay so basically it is a subjective issue that what to consider and what not to consider because many times we found that uh, some topic is seems important not important so it is a subjective decision that uh, which theme to carry forward which theme to drop so that is the point there is a lot of subjectivity comes into this so i hope you like the lecture and uh, we can move to the is that uh, session number 2 uh, so if i may ask a question yeah so my name is kami yes yes sir yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, thank you so much yes yeah, so, so in my experience uh, thematic analysis is mostly used in qualitative research and uh, though i have already oh. uh, yeah it's both but most of the time since i also comes from the social sciences uh, a background we have been using thematic analysis for qualitative research uh, but uh, uh, though i have heard about this nvgo software uh, looks like for the first time i am seeing uh, the whole entire uh, analysis uh, is moving towards a quantitative uh, you know uh, framework though we have been manually feeding all this you know codes themes sub themes so uh, in your opinion uh, though though there is very much of subjectivity involved in the analysis from the part of the researcher uh, which one would you prefer while doing a qualitative research using an nvo or using the human uh, you know uh, subjective interference here actually i suggest you nvo because there is a lot of uh, biasness in the uh, in the thematic analysis so these numbers so whatever numbers you can see in the nvo output they help in reducing the biasness because manually we cannot count that how many times this word repeated in the book if you do it manually it is very very difficult to count the words it is very very difficult to count the weights so if you count all these weights and words with the help of nvo a biasness will reduce a lot so that's why i suggest you to uh, take the help of the software because manually it will take a lot of time frankly speaking yeah so uh, while while you were giving the fourth uh, uh, method i find uh, very much connected with, with the, the research uh, yeah because <laughs> uh, while collecting the data i think it's very much related with analysis also Uh, because with the use of software we are just blindly following what is there numerically uh, you know uh, possible but uh, when we talk about the real analysis and the human participants during the research process and interviewing whether it is structured unstructured or semi structured i find the ford method to be really uh, you know uh, accurate in terms of uh, research and also sir in the end vivo uh, what i am seeing is the themes and uh, the sub themes what about the quotes quotes are also quotes are the themes quotes are nothing they are the themes okay including the examples yeah all right all right actually sir we are living in the uh, world of artificial intelligence so now it is what uh, we are doing we are connecting the in uh, input to the software like for example every day twitter is coming tweets are coming and every day we are doing sentiment analysis to find out the sentiment in the stock market or the crypto market or the elections and you know that now now no election is possible without the qualitative analysis i am telling you because the it cell is uh, analyzing the sentiment of the people and on the basis of the sentiment they are taking the actions they are uh, spreading the news they are doing a lot of things on the on the qualitative basis 
so manually it is not possible so that's why software is making help a lot software is very very useful in that because you have to take decisions very fast you cannot read the sentences mentioned in the facebook or whatsapp twitter instagram so or even youtube whenever you post any video you can see that there are thousand of comments it is just impossible to read all the comments uh, uh, and take the decisions on that so that's why software is sometimes will will, will be very very helpful thank you so much for the clarification sir yeah. Okay, and now uh, let's. Uh, so we will move to the next uh, session, but uh, I need a break, ten to fifteen minute break, and then I will go to the session number two. I hope I hope there is there is fine. Yes, sir. Renka. We can take a two. Yes, yes, sir. We can take a two minutes break. To how many minutes? So uh, actually, as per the schedule, there is no uh, break uh, technically. But if so you do... rest minute, can we take? Because my class is so so busy, right? Okay. so uh, after 10 minutes i will definitely but we can extend 10 minutes of, uh, after eight that is not okay okay sir right? so i will connect you uh, after just 10 minutes okay sir so we are very much online here only i, I think everybody can then yes yes just, just uh, not not break. more than i will not take more than 10 minutes just okay okay sir
So now I am going to start. I hope I am audible. Okay. So this uh, section this session is uh, on two aspects number one the social media analysis and number two is the narrative analysis so let's speak on narrative first and then i will tell you the the social media and uh, sentiment analysis <clears throat> So I'm using the same file. Let me delete all the previous work. Now, if I uh, uh, narrative, so let me talk about narrative first. What is narratives? What is narratives? <clears throat> files, yeah. So I'm removing all files. One question I start with how to tell the stories narratives can be ex defined as the art of telling the stories <clears throat> narrative means the art of telling the stories if you watch the movies or you watch the web series or serials tv serials the way they tell the story is called narrative now the question is that those who are in media, they, those who are in media, I don't know whether anybody is from media science or not in this workshop, they can tell you the narrative better than me. <clears throat> the, there is only one question, how to tell the story. And it is not a very easy task, how to tell the stories. Because if everybody know that how to tell these stories, that all, all movies are super hit. And you know that in India, if 100 movies comes in one year, only 10 have the tag of super hit. The 90% of the movies are super failure. Even they are not able to recover the cost. One of the reasons behind the success of the movie or the success of the web series is the narrative art, art of narrative, art of narrative. <laughs> Even I'm telling you, so because I'm in training business, training and consulting business. So in 2019, when I came to know that uh, there is the art of narrative, there's the art of telling stories. Then I did a small research that how to make the how to uh, make the storytelling better. Okay. <clears throat> so then uh, I learned some techniques and I incorporated all these techniques in my lectures. And that is the reason that my lectures are, have the better feedback as compared to others. So the question is that, do you want to learn these techniques? If yes, then uh, I'm giving you a few sessions, few like few tips. If you incorporate those tips into the sessions, your session have better feedback than others. 
because uh, art of narratives i added into the lectures because in lectures we are also telling you the story so we are also telling you the stories and when you are in training business so you want that uh, you want that your training session will be full of the listeners and believe me it is a very difficult task very difficult task i know many people who are also the trainers so when they when they offer their workshops they got only 10 participant 20 participant 15 participants that's it and after some time they feel that it is not a uh, cup of cup of tea so they leave it so uh, most of you are budding researchers or faculty members it is very very important to incorporate these tips so you can incorporate the art of telling stories in the lectures now i just want to know that do you, has uh, anybody knows any tip of making the lectures interesting and what are the different tips which can makes your movie successful or a series successful or any uh, lecture public speaking successful any tip if anybody have any idea you he or she can write okay now i'm not not getting any answer <clears throat> so uh, charu is saying that voice modulation is necessary yes it is good it is it is playing a very important role constant engagement with the audience actually this is we want this we want now the question is that how to interact how to uh, okay asking questions practical applications yeah good <coughs> involvement of audience <laughs> okay let me tell you some tips i found that the 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 suspense 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 means surprise surprise if you have suspense and the surprise element in the session the audience will listen you patiently so the the most important the most important component of a uh, story is the suspense because i am telling you if uh, there are many movies like 83 this gangu bai all these movies are based on the uh, actual characters and suppose you are going to watch 83 movie movie 83 or there are many movies like mary pom and all everybody know their stories so why you are going to watch these stories even sanju the the, the movie come sanju sanjay dat so why the people going to uh, watch the movies because and why the movies are so super hit because because every director when make the movie so he must have in this mind that whatever public knows if i show you if i show them that part which they already know they will not come to watch the movie they want to keep the movie they want to watch the movie because they want to uh, see what they don't know so the first thing which i uh, want to tell you that try to add as much as suspense in the lectures if you remember i started my lecture with the introduction story i and, and i still i am not disclosing the answer because i know that anybody who is in the paper writing he he must wait for the answer till the end of the session so the one thing which is very very important and anybody who is not writing the paper he may not be interested in my in my session i know that but even if i 10% people are interested in uh want to know that what should be in, incorporated in the introduction to improve the possibility of the uh publication so they must listen my lecture till the end so so one thing is that 
you must have to add some suspense and some surprise element in the lecture so that is very important whether it may be it may come in the format of example or live examples or any other comments or the contents so you have to add as much as content in the session number 1 in number 2 uh continue with two parallel stories or three parallel stories so introduce one story and leave it and continue another story continue to for some time and then come back to the first story continue for some time then come back to the third, third second story and meanwhile also uh you can continue third story so many stories you can continue with time although it is very difficult but uh these these ways will add value to the lecture and uh, because anybody want don't don't want to listen what he knows they always want to listen what he don't know in in a storytelling way so i all, always tried to uh, continue with two parallel stories so that uh, when they understand first story then i move to the second story connect some with some point then third story connect with some points like that the third point which i want to tell you that humor without humor it's very 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 difficult to make the things interesting humor is very very important even if you are teaching the maths add humor into it so and this humor comes always after 15 seconds if you add some humor after 15 seconds because whatever you are doing you are awakening the awakening the people because there it is a tendency of the mind to sleep so you only the humor can awake that patience or that uh, so you have to add the humors as well so these are the few few of the points which i am telling you even if you work only on the suspense part you can make your lectures very very hit and fourth point which i am working from my last few lectures is that you cannot teach so many things in one lecture you teach only simple thing but in different examples so don't teach much in the class teach one teach the most important content of the class the what is the most important content only teach that don't teach any uh, any other things so there are some uh, even my research is still going on that how to make the lectures interesting and that's why from last 3 uh, 2 uh, years i am conducting online workshop and uh, in all the workshop the number of participants are more than 100 so the only thing why they are why people are joining my workshop because they find the mixture of all these things okay so this is about the narratives narratives narrative narrative means how to tell the story now coming back to the my session today that is on social media analytics so i am telling you a simple story so when uh, the hillary and the trump so they were fighting each other and hillary was the traditional and practicing politician everybody knows hillary very much established established politician and in front of the established politician there is a new politician called trump and the trump uh, contest in front of the hillary and all the political expert they claim that the hillary will win because uh, you bring a businessman into the election who is not having any knowledge of the politics so imagine the scenario when the trump is fighting the election in front of the traditional established politician famous politician in the country and uh, the political expert say that uh, if election held today 
सिक्सटी परसेंट वोट कम टू एटलीस्ट दिलेरी एंड फोर्टी परसेंट वोट विच इज ऑफ दिकॉज ऑफ दार्टी कम्स टू दम्प सो दैट वॉज दिनरियो एंड आई होप मेनी ऑफ यू नो ऑलरेडी नो दिस then the trump decided to play with the emotions of the people but because he was a businessman so he hired a company he hired a company and that company was a social media analytics so he did that the company was a specialist in the social media analytics so the company go to the social media analyze the twitter statements analyze the facebook comments analyze the whatsapp comments analyze the youtube comments and identify the people who are against the trump or in favor of hillary because uh, you know you, you when you go to the facebook and it is very very easy to identify that who is writing against the leader so the company is start targeting those people so they start sending the uh, achievements of trump in the life to do these people because they know that if we if we uh, modify even 10% of for 20% of the people the trump will won the election and they did it seriously so or even uh, when the election happens you know that and everybody know that trump won the election and it is because of the social media analytics it is because of the social media analytics and i i am tell you one more incident in uh, last year in the year of 2019 i think or 19 or 20 i year 20 2020 there was election in in, uh, in delhi and the three parties were fighting uh, one is the arvind kejriwal congress and the bjp and uh, the arvind kejriwal was new at the time so he had only the experience of 40 days and uh, uh, the election the election day was 11th february 11th of february 2020 11th february 2020 all of you most of you belong to delhi you know that so in 20 22nd january the meeting was held in bjp and bjp was al- almost confident that we will elect, we will uh, win the election and manoj tiwari was the president of delhi bjp unit all the companies because uh, they have they are in touch with the companies and all the companies they told the leader of the bjp that Arvind Kejriwal is going to win all the 60 seats from Delhi. So from this news the BJP leaders shocked. So they they almost shocked that uh, okay this is the scenario. So immediately they remove the Manoj Tiwari and bring Kiran Bedi into the picture. So they they propose Kiran Bedi as a leader because nobody want to see Manoj Tiwari as a leader at the time. this was the market report and they bring kiran vedi because they have to bring a strong candidate as in front of the arvind kejriwal and amit shah left each and everything and started rally in delhi because if arvind kejriwal won 60 seats it, it is a big winning and a major defeat for bjp party in delhi so amit shah even leave each and everything and started doing rally in the delhi so continuously after a lot of a uh, lot of practice lot of exercise lot of social media analytics they able to win only 12 votes i i i confused with the figure i especially not remember the exact figure but something like that so now this is the power of social media so you can imagine the social media power and uh, one more incident is coming to me it is of 2019 i was taking the training in nhpc faridabad and uh, the topic was social media one of the so i i show them a report so this report was published by one of the company that in in the election the modi will modi is coming with majority 
so a few managers which are against modi because in modi's uh, regime they are having they, are, they have to work so many so hard so they were against the modi and they say that no 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 congress will come so i show the report that this is the report this is the qualitative analysis this is social media analytics and the report say that the bjp will, will win more than 300 seats so actually the social media is so powerful in india or in in every country that if you know how to analyze it you can take many more decisions many many decisions so one of the uh, one of the trailer i am showing you now so so i i just actually created this suspense so maybe you are interested in knowing that how we can measure all these things so um, you can go to the import and you can see there is a there is a tool called n capture i click on the n capture and this is the most powerful tool available with the nvivo now i am showing you how can i use this tool to capture the social media data so at present i don't have any data set so i am but i am going to show you how to create the how to capture the data set so let's go to the uh google so now i am showing you how to take the data set so first of all let's go to the youtube youtube you can see because youtube is one of the important source of qualitative data and uh, so let me find out any video which is very uh, short video okay let's see this uh, yeah this is a 1 minute video but it is a web series may not be interested let me click on this i am not playing the video don't worry so let me uh, just pause the video yeah this is the video simple now you may be thinking that what i am going what i am going to do with this video i just click on this and capture tool so you can see that this is the and capture for nvivo has access to this site so this software is telling you that i can collect the data from this website click on this now software is asking you that do you want to capture only videos or videos and comments or as a web page <clears throat> because uh, comments are very important so i am clicking on this i want to capture the video and the comments so after that you can click on the capture the software will show you that the capturing process is going on show capture progress page click on this so you can see that the software is capturing the video but i know that it will take at least 1 uh, hour so i am stopping it because i i cannot do anything i just show you how to capture the video and the comments okay now uh, better we go to the twitter so i am going to the twitter now most popular social media of today and uh, so this is the twitter and what's happening means the most popular topic is you can see here indian students st stranded in ukraine okay russia so from rrr to 99 stand with putin okay i think the everybody is talking about the russia and ukraine war okay so let me uh, search here the hashtag and uh, so russia so the software is telling me that uh, 3490 tweets are available in the last one hour and uh, if i click on this russia ukraine okay so i am interested in finding out the tweets related to russia and ukraine 
but I want to make some improvement. Like you can see three dots. These three dots help you in modifying the search. So I click on this advanced search. And uh, so my search is hashtag uh, Russia Ukraine you are a I hope the spelling is right let me copy this because if I use wrong spelling it will be problem so I am taking this Russia in Ukraine language because I cannot understand Russia I cannot understand Germany so only English language I can understand. So let's do the English. Dates. I want to analyze the uh, tweets which is coming from February uh, 28th and uh, 2022 till today, March, 2nd March 2022. So you can give a range of the tweets, search. So all the tweets are coming. Now I want to capture all these tweets. So I go to the NVivo, tweets as data set, capture. And software is asking for authorization, no problem. And let me see the progress. So you can see that the software is capturing the tweets and the progress you can see in front of you. The progress is just in front of you. It will take hardly one minute. So not a problem. I want to show you the progress. So see the progress and I hope uh, I can download at least 10,000 tweets today. Although it is very big, make the NVivo slower, but I can stop just now, but uh, I want to show you the number of tweets we can download. I'm expecting around 10,000 tweets. Even uh, the software can give me more than that. So you can imagine any figure near to 10,000. How many tweets we can capture? The similar exercise I can do on the Facebook, I can do on the Instagram, I can do on the LinkedIn. So any platform, social media platform you can do. You can go to the Quora. So the process is exactly the same. So I'm not repeating all these things, all these uh, websites. So just going to showing you the analysis of the Twitter. <clears throat> So 9,600, good. 7,700. Oh, yeah. The, we, we are able to download more tweets. So you can imagine any number, which, uh, how many tweets we can download. Because uh, more than 10,000 means the, it can go to any number. So I'm expecting uh, 17,000, 16,000 because nowadays I'm not uh, expecting so much tweet on Russia, Ukraine. But in fact, the Twitter is flooded with the tweets. The software is telling me that there's a lot of tweets on this topic. Okay, 14,000. So it will make my NVivo slower. So 
15,000 tweets. This is beyond uh, expectation. So whenever the number of tweets exceed 10,000, it means that a lot of people are doing the tweets on that. Oh, 17,000. So uh, the total in total 17,896 tweets are captured. Okay, let me show you one more social media, Facebook. So when you open, this is my Facebook page. And uh, you know that in Facebook, there are so many pages, like uh, we have all these groups, uh, Indian PhD students, data analysis, spaces, search paper, and this is my group. So I am handling this group. Okay, suppose uh, you want to capture all the information in this page. So you can do one thing that uh, click on the this icon again and, and capture. And software is asking that you want to download as a PDF or article. So I say that I want to download this page as a PDF capture and software will show me the progress. Software is capturing the Facebook page as a PDF file and captured already. So we have captured two things. One is the, uh, the Twitter tweets and second is the Facebook. So now I'm telling you how to incorporate import in the NVivo. So just import, click on the end capture. When you click on the end capture, software will show you that these are the pages you captured. So I am selecting only the two. So this is LinkedIn, Facebook, but I'm not uh, doing selecting only the two things which I downloaded in, in front of you. So what, this is the Facebook page and uh, this is the name of the page. And this is Russia, Ukraine tweets and you just click on the import. So because the number of tweets are more, so software will take some time. And that's why I afraid that uh, these 17,000 tweets will make my NVivo slower. But anyhow, we have to wait because if more tweet, we have better uh, information. So software is uh, in the process of importing the two files from the end capture into the NVivo. It will take only one minute, more, not more than that. So you can see that the 74% process is already done. Okay, so the import, import, the software imported the tweets and the Facebook page. So I click on the tweets. I want to see all these tweets, just click on that. And the tweet is coming here. So let me analyze the tweets. First of all, I want to see from where they are coming. So you can see in the right hand side, I click on the chart because this chart will give me better information. So, because the number of tweets are 17,000, 
yeah chart is coming so you can see that these are the username in the x axis you can see the username so the tweets are coming from these username and the highest uh, chart is coming then this is somebody rk1123 and i want to see more information i go to the select data you can see here first of all i want to know that from which location they are coming so there are many things which you can see here so let me click on the username uh, or location <laughs> oh uh, this is surprising uh, highest number of uh, tweets are coming from new delhi this is surprising india uk ye to meri samajh se bahar hai ki ye new delhi se itne sare tweet kyu ho rahe hain jo tweet humne download kiye hain usme sabse zyada tweet kaha gaya hai new delhi aur <laughs> india ke ye thoda surprising hai i was expecting the more more tweets are coming from russia or ukraine but uh, why india <laughs> that is surprising okay let me check some other information uh, timeline by hour ki ghanton ke hisab se tweets kaise aaye according to the hours how the tweets are coming okay so we can find out that in during which time the more tweets are coming so sabse zyada tweet kaun se time pe aaye uh 2 march 2022 12 baje so around 12 o'clock the highest number of tweet come uske baad hi kam hote gaye okay so maximum tweet come in during this time similarly by day you can also analyze that uh, kis duration mein kis din mein tweet sabse zyada hai on which day the highest number of tweets are coming so there are many analysis which you can do on the right okay so one uh, pehli march ko itne aaye the to march ko zyada aaye hain to software ne sirf only software only compare the first march and the second march okay now the software ends kya kuch problem ho gayi so let me close some of the pages otherwise mm. i have to close many files because they are slowing If you are planning to uh, use the MVO, you must have the software uh, laptop with 8 GB RAM. Otherwise, it will create it will create problem. So now I am using the same file. Uh, maybe because of some reason, it stops. Okay, files. let me import the this file again and uh, facebook page <clears throat> so i have to stop uh, some unnecessary files so it will take another one minute so meanwhile you can ask your ask any question if you have in your mind so i will answer it
So Mahima is uh, saying that uh, we can download the tweet of only those people from so whom we are following. No, actually it is not the case. You can download of any tweet. Like okay, so these are the tweets coming again. I hope it will not sit down again. Yeah. So we are moving to the charts. The only problem here is that the number of tweets are too much, so it is taking time. Otherwise, and uh, my laptop is open from uh, morning, so it is now. It is thaggya bichara bhi thoda sa thaggya to slow chal raha. Otherwise, it is uh, quite a advanced software, advanced laptop. Okay, <clears throat> now uh, so you can make different type of charts here. After that, I can go for the map. So you can see there's a map. So now I can also see from where the tweets are coming. So the tweets are coming almost every part of the world. Even uh, Antarctica se bhi tweet aare. <laughs> okay. Suppose I want to see from uh, this is the India. So I want to know that from India, which type of tweet are coming? You just You see the bottom, right bottom. There is a minus plus there, so you can have control. Africa को ज़्यादा मतलब नहीं होता इन जियो से तो tweet कम आते हैं normally Africa से. So we are having the tweet from not from even this part. Uh, India से सबसे ज़्यादा tweet हैं तो देखते हैं कहाँ से आ रहे हैं. Europe से तो आएंगे ही आएंगे वो तो बिचारे suffer कर रहे हैं. So we have to see the tweets. okay uh so delhi actually somebody who oh, there is only one company who is doing the tweet ye jo aapko 1853 tweet dikh rahe hain sabse zyada tweet actually yahan se aa rahe hain so the largest number of tweet is coming from this place oh uh, if i go in detail so ye tweet i think this is connaught place uh, near to the connaught place uh new delhi so those who know delhi they can tell me which is the area okay this software is so smart that uh, this software can tell you that exactly from which place the tweets are coming so you can identify the from which place the tweets are coming you can find out the location also and if we move so this is the location from where the tweets are coming now similarly uh, you can see this twitter sociogram in the last option twitter sociogram actually i am not going to click this button because it will take at least 10 minutes to complete the diagram so from in the workshop we normally don't click on it otherwise when you click on it you can have a sociogram sociogram means what is the structure of the tweet and the retweet so you can identify that who is making the tweet and uh, which tweet is having so many retweets so that kind of analysis we can also do uh, by clicking on the sociogram but actually this diagram is a very big diagram uh, usually take a lot of time so i am not clicking on it cluster analysis yeah this is quite fam, uh, quite good cluster analysis we can see that which words are coming in one cluster so that we can do very easily okay so we are going to do the cluster analysis in cluster analysis the logic is that which words are coming near to each other they comes in one cluster and the words are which are far from each other they comes in different clusters so this is the cluster analysis and uh, if we increase this so you can read all the clusters so these are the words which are coming in one cluster although um, it is very difficult to identify the meaning of the clusters but software because in tweet tweet the cluster analysis is not not very very useful but if you do the cluster analysis in the literature review 
research papers then this exercise is very very important so you can identify that which words are closing coming uh, coming closing closer to each other so cluster say we can do and uh, so you can go to table data you can go to the from you can click on the chart so a cluster analysis map now i am going to do some other analysis you go to the explore go to the word frequency and uh, select item i am selecting only the tweets okay and uh, want to click on the stem words and then query so i want to see that which word is using uh, in the tweets frequently by the users so which is the most frequent word i want to see that okay so if i go to the word cloud word cloud so i have all these words russia now httpb this is not important word so i remove it so you have to clean some the diagram and even go to the summary and uh, rather than looking at the 1000 words let's see 100 words only the 100 words 1000 is too much so these are the important words which uh, frequent frequently used words so this is russia ukraine ukraine russia uh, you uh, russian palestine palestine putin's war now okay so these are the words now uh, although not very easy to define it but you can do all these things and after that you can do one more thing so let uh, go to the this word is something ukraine russia war acha ukraine russia war international impose palestine okay let me see what is palestine so i can click on the run text search query for palestine so click on run text search query or palestine now you will have a different figure <clears throat> and click on the word tree so all these statements you may not believe it all these statement <clears throat> where this word is used so you can see all these statements and uh, the software find out five words five words before the the palestine five words after the palestine and complete words in the whole tweets all the all the 17000 tweets are here मैं आपको सिंपल बता रहा हूं पेलेस्टाइन वर्ड जिन सेंटेंस में है इस वर्ड से पांच शब्द पहले और पांच शब्द बाद पूरा पिक्चर की फॉर्मेट में आ गया आपके सो so, इनको पढ़ के आप आइडिया लगा सकते हैं कि पेलेस्टाइन किस सेंस में यूज हुआ है सो दैट दे आर पीपल पेलेस्टाइन बट दिस इमेज इज फ्रॉम पेलेस्टाइन पेलेस्टाइन डोंट स्पीक आउट बिकॉज so these are the sentences that uh, which is containing this word so you have five words before five words after so this is called tree method word tree method so word tree you can make from here also <clears throat> data set okay so we can do so many things in from uh, and vivo similarly suppose i am i am interested in in doing the uh, thematic analysis on, on on this so you just click on this auto code identify themes next so software will give you the themes on on the on the social media data very easily so social is uh, the software is going you all the themes on which all the tweets are based 
and after that i will i'm going to show you the sentiment analysis also after this exercise i'm going to show you the logic of sentiment analysis wait for one minute i hope more not more than 1 minute is needed for this or i can do one thing i can cancel it no problem because we are not going to do the thematic analysis on it so let's go to auto code now we are doing the sentiment analysis on this sentiment analysis on this so let's spend time here finish so software is identifying the sentiment in the tweets now i am giving you telling you the logic <clears throat> so meanwhile the software is doing its work let's and try to understand the logic of sentiment so i am telling you the sentiment algorithm okay so what is sentiment algorithm actually there are four dictionaries and uh, we are having the four dictionary dictionary of highly positive words moderately positive moderately negative and highly negative ye char dictionary hai baqaida badi hui software ne kya kiya software make four dictionaries and software find out that how many words belong to this dictionary how many words belong to this dictionary how many words belong to this dictionary and how many words belong to this dictionary to aapke paas yahan pe kya aa jayenge words aa jayenge so 2000 words 3000 words and 2000 words 4000 words and from these words we make a sentiment index so what is sentiment index sentiment index is uh normally i make this formula 30% multiplied by highly positive 20% moderately positive uh, divided by 30% into highly negative plus 20% into moderately negative so normally we use this formula to find out the sentiment index and one thing i am also telling you okay so let me show you the how i calculate sentiment index 0.3 multiplied by highly positive plus 0.2 multiplied by uh, moderately positive divided by 0.3 multiplied by highly negative plus 0.2 multiplied by moderately negative so aap is formula se sentiment index nikal sakte ho and you can use this sentiment index for different companies different uh, different days different right documents so that is one thing another thing is that <clears throat> what is the problem in the sentiment analysis that is you you are not able to identify the uh, usko hum kya kehte hain taunt maarne ko uske liye ek word hota hai the main exactly word mere ko dhyan nahi aa raha ki jo double meaning sentences hote hain that is the problem in uh, in sentiment analysis because in tweets what is going on there is a people that uh, they 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 are ah uh, sarcasm nazia very good so sarcasm sarcasm so isko uh, actually kya hota hai ki kai bar jaise acha rahul bada acha hai matlab log aise puchte na acha rahul gandhi acha hai to ye kya hai ki uh, software kya isko confuse kar jata hai software software will tell you that this is a positive statement but the actually it is not a positive statement so the i know that, that there are many uh, there are many 
scientists, who, data scientists who are trying to identify that how to uh, find out the sarcasm. But still, I have not found find out the any of the algorithm which is talking about these things. So um, this sentiment analysis having some limitation also, so that uh, we are not able to identify the sarcasm in the document. So this is the only problem. This is the problem. One of the problem in sentiment analysis. Otherwise, uh, for a for a layman, the sentiment analysis is only the counting of the words. So doctor is also finishing the task and now I am going to explain what is that. Sentiment analysis is very, very useful for elections, for crypto market, for a stock market. Because uh, if you know about the crypto market, only one tweet by Elon Musk can make the market or crash the market. So one positive tweet can bring the market up and one bad tweet can bring the market down. So uh, in crypto, the sentiment is very important. Like here you can see that uh, we are having the uh, very negative words, moderately negative words, moderately positive words. So let the software finish its task, then I will show you that how we can use it. And suppose if I import 10 documents, software will do the analysis on 10 documents. So uh, in one of the research, we apply the, actually I'm telling you one of the research paper is going on. Uh, the researcher divide the companies into two categories. The healthy companies and the bad companies, not healthy companies or unhealthy companies. Even some of the companies are bankrupt, going to be bankrupt or loss making companies. So we want to identify that what kind of word they are using in the annual reports. Are they using positive words? Are they using negative words? Even I'm telling you, I have seen one paper where the researcher is, is uh, comparing the uh, sentiment of the Modi speech as well as Rahul Gandhi speech. That who is more positive and who is more negative. So uh, comparison of the tweets is very, very important. I have seen many papers where the researchers compare the, compare the sentiment of uh, healthy companies or uh, foreign companies, local companies, private companies, public companies like that. <clears throat> and they also, uh, in one of these studies, I found that the research scholar uh, find out the sentiment index of each day from the stock market, from the Twitter. And uh, uh, he do it for continuous six months. And after that, he have a time series. He's considering the tweets as a time series, sentiment index as a time series and apply the time series modeling on the uh, sentiment index and the stock market actual data. So he want to know that is, is there any connection between the uh, tweets and the, the stock market. So these sentiments and index are very, very useful for the research papers. So the software is uh, busy. Uh, still, the software is finalizing the words. Yeah, done. So now you can go for auto code sentiment results make the chart. So you have seen uh, this diagram in uh, many research papers. So where, uh, okay, moderately very negative, a number of very negative sentiments are this. Moderately negative are this. Moderately positive with this and very positive with this. And uh, if I tell you the number, so where is the number? Okay, if we click on the metrics, yeah. So you can see that we are having the number. 
Now, if I want to uh, calculate the sentiment index, I can put the formula that sentiment index is equal to. There are two methods. One method is that uh, one six five one plus six zero eight divided by four eight four one plus eight one eight three. This is the simple division of, uh, or you can take the weighted division. Like for example, point three multiplied by one six five one. No, no. Uh, uh, this is point two because we are giving more weight to the very positive and less weight to the moderately positive. So point three multiplied by point six zero eight divided by point two multiplied by eight one six three plus point three multiplied by four eight four one. So if you calculate it, you will get the sentiment index, and uh, I guess it is very very negative. the market is very negative on the news so here this is the thing which you can do in sentiment analysis the only the uh, there are many problems in the sentiment analysis which i told you earlier that uh, we we are not able to identify this as uh, the tones and this as sarcasm sarcastic kind of sarcastic statements so we cannot identify the sarcastic statements Only thing we can identify that how many positive words are there, how many negative words are there. So this is the uh, sentiment analysis we can do in the software. <coughs> okay. So this software is having uh, a lot of facilities. Even uh, one one thing I am telling you that uh, if you go to the explore. and go to the word frequency or uh, not word frequency text search go to text search sometimes we we are analyzing the uh, combination of words like for example the stock and market uh, and russia ukraine so sometimes we are interested in analyzing the combination of the words so you can see the run query and you will get i hope you will get some of the okay the software the people are not using the uh, combination of stock market and russia ukraine let me check is there any combination of market and russia ukraine or uh, business i think my spelling mistake is there so uh, software identify 24 references which are talking about the business and the russia if you click on this you can also see the the important words which are talking about the business and the russia so just double click on it you the software will give you all the lines there are 24 references which is talking about the relationship between the business and the russia so in this way we can do a lot of things in the envivo so so this the software is light uh, slow okay <clears throat> after this i am showing you some of the papers which are based on sentiments but let me finish this okay the only problem with software is that it is taking too much time now i am showing you some of the papers on sentiments um mm.
sentiment. So this is a uh, sentiment paper based on the Twitter. Rahul Gandhi on Twitter. Okay, so this is one paper, uh, Rahul Gandhi on Twitter, uh, published in GBA, GBR, say ABTC paper. An analysis on uh, brand building through Twitter by the leader of the main opposition party in India. Okay, so uh, they they do the thematic analysis that who is talking about this. Uh, the Rahul Gandhi is talking about the publicizing rallies, public interaction, compliments, criticizing, scarcity, uh, commenting on the PM and his party, farmer, farmers' issues, depressed class issue cause, high petroleum price, and these these are the themes of uh, PM Modi. Then uh, these are the uh, word cloud of uh, Rahul Gandhi versus Modi. And uh, count Rahul Gandhi, the word count, the, the Narendra Modi word count, and uh, text analysis. Okay, now uh, text analysis, this is the text analysis. And after that, we must have sentiment, yeah. So you can see the sentiment analysis of the of the two, two, two main leaders of India, the Rahul Gandhi tweet sentiment and uh, Rahul Gandhi tweet sentiment, Rahul Gandhi, okay. That is Rahul Gandhi auto code sentiment analysis. So you can see that 46% is, uh, moderately negative and uh, the blue for 30 percent and 46 percent if you add it uh, it is approximately 76 percent so 76 percent of the statement of the rahul gandhi is found negative only eight percent are found to be positive if you compare with narendra modi so this is the so modi is talking about moderately positive so more 38% moderately positive. So they compare that the Modi is more positive as compared to Rahul Gandhi. And uh, this is one of the reasons that why people like him. So this is uh, one paper of uh, sentiment analysis. So similarly, you can find out so many. Okay, this is another one paper. Understanding one word environment day user opinion in Twitter, a topic based sentiment analysis approach. So again, in this paper, you can see the sentiments. This is the word frequency model. These are the weights they assigned for different uh, sentiments. Average probability, okay. Word frequency. These are the uh, thematic analysis. So they also do thematic analysis and uh, somewhere they also reported the sentiment. Sentiment kaha pe hai? I think this is not sentiment, Twitter analysis. So in they download the Twitter. Yeah, this is sentiment analysis. So negative, neutral, positive, negative. Uh, looking at these negative the values, the, it is clear that this is not uh, done in, on NVO because NVO don't calculate the neutral words. So NVO only calculate moderately positive, positive, negative, moderately negative. So this, uh, they, they may be using some other, another software. Because in R, the logic of uh, the positive, negative is different. And in another software, the logic of uh, algorithm is different actually. So in this way, you can write paper on sentiment analysis. I hope you get some idea on sentiment analysis. Meanwhile, we are also having, okay, this is still running. Uh, the, or the output that you will, you will have on this is, all the sentences which are talking about the Russia and business is will, will be visible.
Then uh, these are all qualitative papers, papers on restaurant ratings, Rahul Gandhi uh, sentiment, Twitter analysis, Twitter word cloud. These are the sample papers which I take from the internet. Uh, this is uh, Me Too campaign, marketing challenges in the Me Too era, gaining uh, business insight using an exploratory sentiment analysis. So this is, uh, I personally like this paper. Okay. So the sentiment analysis. Yeah, so you can see that they identify the, the topic, keyword and sentiment. So they are relating the uh, themes with the sentiment also. So you can also calculate the themes and as well as their sentiments. Uh, it may be possible that some theme are positive, some themes are negative, some themes are moderately positive. So this, you can also connect the thematic analysis and sentiment analysis like this. So I hope you are having the idea of doing the sentiment analysis in uh, NVivo, quite easy. Now, if you have any query, I'm ready, willing to answer. Okay, this is still in the progress. Let me close it, otherwise it will take a lot of time. Okay, so now I'm waiting for the questions and answers. If you have any questions related to uh, session one and session two, I will answer that. Uh, the participant can raise your hand and uh, we can unmute you. You can ask directly. Rekha madam, are you still there? You are muted. I'm, I'm there, Professor Chauhan. <laughs> yeah. In between, my net was giving me some trouble, so I had to switch off the video. Okay, thank you. So, Kuldeep Singh, I want to ask something. Priyanka, if the participants are not able to ask, then can you take their questions from the chat box? Ma'am, I've, I've given them the option to unmute themselves. Oh, well. you have. Very good. That's wonderful. So there's one question which says, uh, can the soft software be used for quantitative data analysis? analysis oh, no, as no. Well? <laughs> no, no, no. For quantitative, we use SPSS, EVUs, and other softwares. So this is only a qualitative, specialized, special design software for qualitative data analysis only. Uh, Miss Mahima is asking is if NVivo is free. So I think you've already answered sir, that this is a paid uh, software. Yeah, it is a professional software, but the cost is not very high. It's uh, worth having a worth. If you... Uh, because uh, spending 9,000 rupees for two years and you, if you write five papers, quality papers, it is, yeah. I think it is worthwhile. Yes. yes sir. All the participants uh, can unmute themselves. If they have any question, they can directly ask that as well from sir. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Kavita Sarvekar. Uh, I'm a question. So, so the thematic uh, analysis that you have talked about today and, you know, about screening papers and, you know, uh, like interviews also, screening the interviews and, uh, you know, getting what is the result of all those. So what is, I mean, what is the output? What is, what do we get as an output? Because, uh, you know, this is a little new for me. I work in quantitative analysis. So in qualitative analysis, like thematic analysis, what is really the output that we are looking at? Okay, uh, Kavita, let me answer you. Uh, in quantitative data analysis, the output is the hypothesis testing, result of the hypothesis testing. In most of the quantitative techniques, uh, 
the ultimate objective is to examine the hypothesis and make conclusion on the basis of the hypothesis testing but in qualitative analysis we never examine the hypothesis testing rather we present the conclusion or the summary of the uh, qualitative data so uh, even all the papers you have seen on uh, qualitative data analysis the conclusion is only the summary of the documents and summary there are specific ways of representing the summary like you can summarize in terms of the themes you can summarize in terms of sentiments you can summarize in terms of the uh, combination of that you can summarize in terms of text mining so the uh, output is summarization of summary making the summary of the document so sir if uh, for example you know we have uh, done some interviews and you know uh, there are conflicting uh, outcomes yeah so, actually I mean, equally you know they are equally conflicting like 50% agree 50% don't agree then how are we able to conclude in that in yeah. that case actually there's a there's a lot of subjectivity in this you can say that uh, this much are against it this much are uh, in the favor of it so you can represent uh, in this way also because in nvo we can uh, we can we, we are having different files i'm telling you because when we do the analysis on the different companies some companies have their own view some companies have their another view so we also prepare the index and uh, calculate all these things company wise also so that we can see that we can say that these are the companies which are highest in terms of this these the, the, the are the companies which are lowest in, in terms of this so uh, we have to convert all the information in some meaningful manner okay thank you sir so there is one question in the chat box Miss Falguni is asking: Are there any agencies who have a licensed copy and would do the analysis for a research client? Actually, uh, I'm telling you, uh, nobody can do research on your behalf. Uh, all these are the supporting systems, right? Everybody is a supporting system, so you can take the support of these agencies, but uh, you cannot outsource the research. That is not possible. so every researcher must know to actually there are three pillars of research this is from telling i'm telling you from my experience there are three pillars of research one is the theory problem and solution theory means what is the problem and what is the solution and the second part is the is the uh, data analysis and uh, the third is the reporting and the language there are three components of a research paper so you must be very very strong in the theory the how problem formulation find out the conclusion these are the supporting systems support systems so um, and there are so many agencies uh, even i am also the part of that so but we on, only provide the support so i hope you uh, get it and the uh, the other problem is that in this uh, data science the uh, 90% of the people don't have the in depth knowledge of the of the tools and techniques so uh, you must be very very cautious in selecting these agencies thank you so much sir this has been a fruitful uh, session professor ajay chauhan as always and i am sure uh, students have uh, a lot to muse over and you know mull over in terms of uh, uh, the seminar that you have delivered and we are extremely grateful to you and feel privileged to have you with us thank you once again for being with us thank you thank you priyanka over to you uh before we conclude i will take this opportunity to uh, uh give a formal vote of thanks uh on behalf of the uh, team indian accounting association and tlc ramanujan college i priyanka marwa would like to uh thank professor ajay chauhan 
for being the resource person for today's session. Sir, it has truly been Victor, very... Uh, I want to say only two lines in the last. Okay, sir. Sure. Okay. So, uh, we're really thankful to you, sir, that uh, despite a very he heavy day-to-day, uh, -day, you uh, uh, taught us very meticulously and it was a lot of learning for all the participants and like you can see the chat box is flooded with thank you and uh, how interesting the session was. So, uh, like you yourself said that there are a lot of people who are not very well versed with these applications, these softwares. So I think this was a very good opportunity for all of us to be aware, especially for uh, qualitative data analysis. Thank you so much, sir. Over to you. Actually, we are working, uh, I'm working from last two years on a concept that is called technical entrepreneurship. PhD and research. PhD or a research gives you the opportunity to have a technical expertise. And believe me, uh, because everybody is spending three years, four years on a topic. So after spending three years or four years on a topic, you are, you are having a technical expertise. And the motive of PhD is, is to provide a solution to the theory or solution to a research problem. So I found that if you have technical expertise and a solution to the problem, you are a technical entrepreneur. So my concept is uh, you can convert a PhD into a startup. So PhD to startup is the concept on which I'm working nowadays. Great, sir. I think what a wonderful idea. It's, a, it's it's an absolutely a noble thing to uh, hear of. Hats off to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you for being with us. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Thank sir. All the participants, we will have uh, the next session tomorrow at the usual time. And uh, there was a question regarding assignments. All the quizzes are being uh, uploaded on the MOOCs portal. All of you have to do your assessment on the portal. So I think that that has answered the query. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Priyanka. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir.